Hello, everyone, and welcome to worship here with us today at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis, and I'm the pastor here at Bread of Life. And I'm really glad that you could join us today for our Ash Wednesday service. Hi, I'm Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here, and I'm really grateful that you could join us this evening. And I'm David Evans, ASL interpreter. Dorothy saying, today is Wednesday, February 17th. And today we have our Ash Wednesday worship service. This is the beginning of the Lenten season. Pastor Michelle is asking, Dorothy, what does Lent mean? Deacon Dorothy. Lent is a special time when we try to limit our distractions and instead focus on Jesus. It's 40 days, and sometimes we like to think of it as a journey. Pastor Michelle, why is it 40 days? Deacon Dorothy. The reason Lent is 40 days is because Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. He limited distractions and focused on God. And so that's what we do right up till the time of Easter. Pastor Michelle. Dorothy, will we have our Wednesday night Lent services this year? Deacon Dorothy, we will, but it's going to be different. We can keep our traditions even though we're physically apart from one another. We'll just use Zoom instead. So on Wednesday night, make some soup, Make some bread, get some bread, have that for dinner. And then come and join us on worship on YouTube at 7 p.m. This time it will be on YouTube versus on Zoom. And we will worship together with Bethel Lutheran Church again, like we did last year. Pastor Michelle. Thanks for that encouragement, Dorothy. Actually, it feels comforting to keep our traditions and we need to be flexible to adjust to the changes in the world around us. Those of you at home might have noticed that our Ash Wednesday worship service looks a little different this year. We will need to mark our own foreheads with whatever we have at home. So I encourage you to gather whatever you need. Uh, if you'll see over by the candle, I have a plant and I'm going to be using some of the dirt from the plant, mix it with water, and then I will mark my own forehead. I encourage those of you at home to do the same thing. Um, perhaps you could use some dust, maybe uh, under a table, on a bookshelf. I'm sure there's dust somewhere in your home. I know there's a lot in my home. Or you could use oil, 
like just regular olive oil for cooking. Anything like that would work. Deacon Dorothy. We remember that Jesus loves us and comes to us when we're lonely and burdened. Jesus comes to us and helps us so that we notice others who need love and kindness as well. And so it is our prayer that we are all strengthened for Lent. Go ahead and light a candle at your home as we enter into worship. Deacon Dorothy, as we enter into worship, let this be the season you turn your face toward the one who calls to you. Return, return to the Lord. Pastor Michelle, the Lord be with you. Congregation, and also with you. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 5 through 8. The Lord God has opened my heart and mind, and I was not rebellious, and I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The one who vindicates me is near. Our second reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 through 62.
when the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem. And Jesus sent messengers ahead. On their way, the messengers entered a village. It was the village of the Samari Samaritans to make a place ready for Jesus. But they did not receive Jesus because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume these Samaritans? But Jesus turned and rebuked the disciples. Then they all went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another, Jesus said, follow me. But that one said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus replied, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. My friends, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Okay, this evening during our Ash Wednesday service, my point of my sermon is this. I wonder if during this Lenten season, we can find resolve, we can turn our faces to love our neighbors in new ways. In today's gospel lesson, we find that Jesus is resolved to go to Jerusalem. The Bible says he set his face toward Jerusalem. Jesus knows that this direction will bring about pain and suffering for him and for those who follow Jesus. But now that Jesus has decided to do this, he will not be distracted. When I read this story, it seems like Jesus is very brusque and direct and really kind of grumpy. It doesn't seem very loving and kind. But this is the tone Jesus has on Ash Wednesday when we celebrate or when we get gather together to remember how Jesus is so focused. Jesus 
is ready to let any let everybody know he will not join them in their distractions. And typically on Ash Wednesday, as we enter into Lent, we often resolve among ourselves that we would limit our own distractions and focus on Jesus. Because Lent really is a special time when we set intentions to focus on God. Often we find ourselves committing to give up something or to slow down and calm our bodies. In other, in years past, some of us will have given up a favorite food or a beverage that we enjoy or maybe try to change a habit. We use that practice. So like if we notice, oh, I'm hungry or I'm thirsty. And we take that noticing that and we pray or we meditate or we give thanks to God for this special time. Now, I'll say that I have seen a comment a lot recently that people feel like we're really still in Lent from last year because it was in the middle of Lent in 2020 that we had to stop gathering because of COVID. And so it's nearly a year that we've all been staying far apart from each other, really limiting our activities, slowing down, not traveling. And here at Bread of Life, we haven't been together in worship or for any events really for almost a year. We are lonely for one another. And I've gotten so many comments recently. When can we go back? When can we go back to the way it was before COVID? In our worship life here at Bold or at Bread of Life, we have been keeping track of time through the rhythms and the seasons of our church year. You know, we celebrated Advent and then Christmas. And now we just came out of the season of Epiphany and we're entering into Lent. But if you're like me, <laughs> it takes kind of a lot of attention to keep track of each day and even then, somehow each week sort of slips away. One day, fairly recently, I had to write the date down two different times that day. The first time I started to write November. And then later in the day, I was writing the date and I started to write June. I felt like I had, I had no idea what day it was. Because really, it was January. <laughs> so this year, as we enter Lent, this call to focus on Jesus the call to slow down or to give up something that we enjoy that may feel to us like more disappointment and more loss. And so I wonder if this Lent, we can resolve together to find new ways to love our neighbors. And I know our patience is wearing thin and we find ourselves frustrated with more people more often. 
So even with all of that, I wonder if we can steal ourselves and resolve ourselves to show kindness, to stop calling people names, even just silently or in our minds, or if we can find ways to give thanks and care for others. This year, as we follow Jesus to Jerusalem here at Bread of Life and our partner congregation, Bethel Lutheran, we are gonna be making paper chains. So we sent the supplies to you in your um, February newsletter. And each day of Lent, you'll cut a strip off of the chain. So you just cut it off. Then I want to encourage you to read the verse or read what it says. Some days it's a, a verse and like a meditation. And some days it's an activity to do. Some days it's like, looking up new information and other times it's um, maybe going out into the community safely of course but going out to the community and and helping finding new ways to help so after you've read your your chain for the your 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 paper for the day after you've done that you can just turn it into a loop. I'm gonna use a piece of tape. Like that. All right, and then I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna cut another one for Thursday. Okay, and then you just loop them together like that. See, and we're going to count our, count the days up to Easter. We're going to add goodness and hope into our lives. And then I encourage you, you know, to find a spot in your home where you'll see these and keep, keep your paper chain there. I'm going to hang mine up here in my office. Because I spend a lot of time in this room. Oops, can't see it. There we go. So as we go through Lent, I'll add more links to my chain. So um, we're, we'll add, uh, like I said, we'll add some joy and goodness into our lives as we search for perhaps new or um, different ways of caring for our neighbors. Now the theme printed on a number of the, of the slips, the theme is focused around the idea of breaking the chains. Breaking chains that hold us and kind of hold us back from one another. And so sometimes there will be a, a, a focus on breaking the chains that keep us focused on ourselves. Those things that help us, that make us just focus on ourselves or chains that keep us 
isolated from God and one another. Or maybe we have habits and chains that fill us with pride and resentment. I'm, I'm better than that. I wouldn't do those things wrong. Or perhaps we have chains in our lives that make us indifferent to another person's suffering or their struggle. So the, the theme for our Lent will be around that idea of breaking the chains. And part of breaking those chains, our habits, is learning to meditate or to pray. And each of the Sundays during Lent includes a Bible verse and a prayer. And it includes encouragement to spend time just breathing, reading through that Bible verse and that prayer, and then breathing. And we build up that time as we go through Lent from one minute up to four or five minutes of just being. I'm praying. So, you know, I said earlier, I have a terrible time right now keeping track of what day it is or what week it is, what month it is. So I want to encourage you to write down a note or two about each day. And then at the end of Lent, we can look back through the paper chain that we made and our notes. And we can notice what God has been teaching us during this Lenten journey. And one other thing I want to add that you can add into your daily practice is that Deacon Dorothy and intern Lori are creating uh, devotional videos again for Lent. So the two of them created this one. During Advent, they uh, created a video from a, a devotional book that we, that we got from somewhere else. But for Lent, Dorothy and Lori have created this particularly for Bread of Life. And those devotional videos will be available in the same place where you find worship every week here in YouTube. So we know that this year, this past year, and as we go forward into 2021, we know it's a very different feeling we know Lent will feel really different. And so we want to encourage you, resolve now, decide now. I will love my neighbors. I will show them care and concern. And even though in our gospel lesson for today, Jesus is kind of brusque and grumpy, we can notice that Jesus is asking us to break chains that keep us from loving and following Jesus without hesitation. Jesus is on a mission to Jerusalem in order to show the world how much God loves us. 
And that is urgent. It is so urgent that Jesus will not be distracted from his mission. Now, Jesus is showing us the cost of loving our neighbors. So sometimes it is risky and even painful to love our neighbors. And still Jesus calls us to share this love, to share God's love with the people we encounter in our lives. And today's lesson does show us that it won't be easy to love our neighbors because some people will misunderstand us. They will reject our focus on caring for others. They will want us to only show love to people who agree with us. Some neighbors will simply reject us. They won't accept our offers of kindness. Others maybe will agree to agree to join us. You know, here at Bread of Life, we have been learning about racism and the effects of discrimination for people because of the color of their skin. So maybe some people will say, sure, I'll join you for that. And then they back out because it's really hard to learn about these things and to change our habits. And as you know, some people in our lives might say, sure, sure, I'll learn sign language. And then they never ever get around to it. So then conversation and communication is always limited and is such a struggle. And even though this isn't exactly in the Bible, some of our neighbors might reject us for trusting that we need to change our lives right now because of COVID. Yes, it can be hard and risky and painful to show our neighbors that we love them. But it is still urgent. It is urgent that we demonstrate how much Jesus loves the world. Because there are some of our neighbors who are hungering and thirsting to know this good news. God loves them. That God rejoices when, uh, when we and our neighbors trust that God loves us. God celebrates when we draw close to God and we know that we are not alone in our suffering. So during Lent, as you and I and we as a community draw closer to Jesus, I wonder how will we resolve to love our neighbors to keep caring for our neighbors. Please let me know how that goes. Amen.
At this time, we have an invitation into Lent, a special moment in our worship to just consider what is Lent. So my friends in Christ, with the whole church on earth, together we enter Lent. And during this season, we remember Jesus' Passover from death to life. And we also remember our life in Christ, and we are renewed. As we enter this season, we um, and shortly in our worship service, we will confess that we need God's mercy. And we are invited to turn around, to face toward God, to focus on God. Because God created us to experience joy with God and to live in harmony with one another and the whole of creation. Now, sadly, we do not always experience this in our lives, the life that our loving God intends for us. Because of our own sin, our own ways that we turn away from God and one another, and because of the sins of others that entrap us. And still, you and I, we are disciples of Jesus. We follow Jesus, and we are called to grow deep in our faith. Faith that depends on God. Faith that stands up against darkness and evil. Faith that resists temptations which lead us away from experiencing God's love and temptations which lead us away from loving our neighbors. So during Lent, we are invited again to practice our faith through many different ways. One is self-examination and repentance, or turning around. Another comes through prayer and fasting, intentional times when we don't eat. A third way comes through giving generously and serving others in love. And a fourth comes through receiving the gifts of word and sacrament through our worship together with the Lord's Supper and remembering our baptisms. So in Lent, we are invited to walk more closely with Jesus as his way goes toward Jerusalem and those great and terrible three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Pastor Michelle. As we are invited into the disciplines of faith, we now observe a time of silence as we confess our sins before God. Lord, we confess that we do not fully understand why you had to die. We do not understand why you were betrayed by human hands. And we do not understand how it is that you rose again.
But we do know, while we kept silent, our bodies wasted away and groaned all day long. Holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another congregation. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We say together, Lord, have mercy. Pastor Michelle. Holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another, congregation, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We all say together, Christ, have mercy. Pastor Michelle, holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another, congregation, we have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We all say together, Lord, have mercy. Soon in our worship together, we will mark our own heads with the sign of the cross. Using dirt or perhaps some dust or some oil from our homes. This year, we don't really need the ashes or the dirt to remind us that we are vulnerable and that our bodies are weak, which often is what we do. But so many have died in this last year from COVID. Our lives have been so disrupted and we are lonely and feel isolated. So we are reminded every day of our vulnerability. So perhaps for this year, at least, that dirt or the dust or the oil that you use will remind you that God creates us out of these very simple elements. God's power makes life out of dirt. Perhaps this year, this dirt and dust will remind us that out of the ground, that right now is very, very frozen, that out of that same ground, very soon, new plants and new life will burst forth.
So I have my plant with its dirt and a bowl of water. Let's pray before we mark ourselves. Powerful God, you created us out of the dust of the earth. Bless these ashes and those who receive them. May this sign of ashes on our forehead remind us that by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are granted forgiveness and eternal life. Amen. So now, wherever you are, go ahead and use your dust, your dirt, your oil. If you're using dust or dirt, mix it with a little bit of water. And then mark yourself on the forehead. as I share these words with you. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Let us pray. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. Keep us in eternal life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayers for the people. Let us pray for all of the people of God and their needs. Merciful God, help us know your presence during our Lent journey. Teach us again about baptism, a gift from you. Help us share our resources to glorify you and to help others. Remind us to pray daily and turn our attention toward our neighbors. Show us that our treasures are in you alone, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we all say together and also with you. Please share God's peace with one another.
you maybe have noticed that the scene has changed in both of uh, our places where Dorothy is and where I am. Dorothy has our Lenten candles in the sanctuary with her. And we use those Lenten candles during Lent to remember this journey. And each week of Lent, we put out a candle, reminding us that as we get closer to um, Easter, really there'll be more darkness than light. And during Lent, we take time to share again the story of how Jesus is betrayed. We talk about Jesus' suffering and his death. And we do this so that others might see how much God loves us. And how others, how can others see um, God's love in you when perhaps when we accept difficult and challenging things that are in front of us? And we accept it without complaint. We don't have a temper tantrum and can throw a fit. We accept those challenging and difficult things without hesitation. And so as Dorothy extinguishes one of the candles today, we remember that we acknowledge our mistakes and our sins. And we pray that we would not be distracted from following Jesus. And Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Receive this blessing before you go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Deacon Dorothy. Go in peace, serve the Lord, and we all say, thanks be to God. Amen.